So with the war in Ukraine, there's a lot of things that people want to do to help. But is there anything that cleared professionals should be wary of in their efforts to help? Yes. Um, and I know we've done some blog work and some articles that you guys have published recently on this issue because we're trying to get the word out. Stop. If you're giving money to companies in Ukraine, if you're giving money to Airbnb. foreign nationals, yeah, well, yeah, Airbnb, whatever it is, if you're giving money to people in the Ukraine, stop. Because if you're giving money to people in Ukraine, you're supporting foreign nationals. You're giving money to foreign nationals. I get it. You know, it, it's, it's a great thing to want to do. I would like to get involved myself. I said, I'm a, you know, I'm a combat veteran. I'd love to get involved. Um, you know, I, there's things I want to do that I'm not in the position to do unless my unit gets mobilized and then I can get involved more. But if you want to donate and help the people in Ukraine, make sure it's an American company. So if you're giving money to an American company that's then taking those funds to support people in, in Ukraine or uh, efforts in Ukraine, that's fine. But if you are giving money straight to Ukrainians, foreign nationals, that's a problem and that's gonna come up and it could potentially cost people to lose their security clearance. If you wanna go and join the Foreign Legion, I guarantee you, you are going to lose your security clearance. There's a lot, I got recruited, you know, because of my background. I, I actually got recruited. A couple of people have reached out and said, hey, we would like you to get involved. Can you come over? And I'd love to, but no, I, because I like what I do for a living. And, you know, I, I would like to be able to maintain a security clearance. And um, the problem there is the minute you go and join the Foreign Legion, you're joining a military force for another country that might someday fight against the Un United States, maybe not. But you're putting yourself in a position where somebody at some point is going to have to decide whether you're more, more likely to resolve a conflict of interest in favor of another country or the United States. So you're creating what we call a guideline B and a guideline C issue for um, foreign, foreign, uh, uh, foreign preference and foreign influence, sorry. So you're, you're, you're creating potential foreign preference and foreign influence issues. Uh, and that's a, that's a tough situation. I, I have uh, one of the leading guideline B and guideline C cases. It was an individual from the UK who was UK military, retired military, came here to support the project that he was working on as an exchange officer with the United States government before he went back, retired, and then came back to that same project. They gave him the clearance as, a, as an exchange officer, like a limited use clearance. Then he came here and he needed the clearance because he became a US citizen. His whole family relocated here. They're all going to college and doing things here. And they tried to stop him from getting a security clearance because of his ties to the UK and, and, and the military. We won the case uh, in, in litigation and on appeal which is why it's one of the leading cases. But um, you, know, you have to be careful about creating those potential guideline B and, and guideline C issues.